What's the connection between this planet, the Greek goddess of love and beauty, and the word Lucifer? The answer for that is always around us. In fact, it's always over your head. To find out, we need to look up at the stars. For thousands of years, the human race has looked up and wondered about our place in the universe. In today's modern era, we have access to a lot of technological innovations that make our life easier. No longer do we need to struggle with two sticks to make fire. We have computers, microwaves, washing machines, and we have powerful telescopes to see the many stars in our galaxy. But people have always been fascinated with the sky, even if they didn't have today's facilities and comforts. Despite liking all this, our ancestors drew symbols of the stars and tracked the movement of celestial bodies from a long time ago. The distance between the Earth and Venus changes because of their orbits. At its farthest, Venus is 162 million miles away from us. This is according to NASA. Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system. It has over 1,500 volcanoes on its surface, with temperatures hot enough to melt lead. And Venus is also the only planet named after a female figure in our solar system. It was one of the first planets that was noticed by our ancestors. This is because you can see it with your own eyes, specifically at dawn and also at dusk. The ancient Greeks had two names for Venus, Phosphorus in the morning and Hesperus in the evening. When they figured out that it was the same object, they called it Aphrodite. The mythology later evolved, turning this figure into their most beautiful goddess. Aphrodite's main symbols are the rose, the dove, and the swan. Her birth story is described in Theogony, a work by the Greek poet Hesiod around the year 700 BC. According to Hesiod, Cronus, leader of the Titans, cut off his father Uranus' manhood and threw it into the sea. Aphrodite was later born from the sea foam that was formed. Consequently, Hesiod thought Aphrodite's name meant risen from foam, but it can also be linked to meanings such as shining and wanderer. Hesiod mentions two islands in Aphrodite's story. She was born in Cyprus, but reached the holy island of Cythera. He seems to talk about a journey starting in Cyprus where she was born and ending in Cythera, her new home, where she becomes part of the Greek world. The Greek influence extended to the names of the Roman planets as well. They translated the original Greek words into Latin, so that the Greek word Hesperus, the evening aspect of Venus that is, became Vesper for the Romans. So, you would be surprised to learn that Phosphorus, accounting for the dawn, the rising position of Venus in the sky, became Lucifer. Now, how can such a positive concept be twisted into something we associate with the devil? To find out where this started, we need to look at a scripture from the book of Isaiah. Before we dive into that, however, I want to mention that this is not the only deity from Greek mythology that contributed to the concept of the Christian devil. The same happened with the god Pan, and I do have a dedicated video for that. The link for that is down below. Make sure to check that out. Interestingly, Lucifer is only mentioned once in the Hebrew Bible. This is the passage. How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the dawn. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of congregation. On the farthest sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. This passage is also mentioned in my other video of how a Greek god became the Christian devil, so again make sure to check that one out after this video. But this passage is in fact talking about the king of Babylon, not Satan. In ancient times, royal families were connected with gods and goddesses, who were associated with stars and planets. The word Lucifer, Lightbringer, or Morning Star, was an honorary title in the Babylonian language. One of the major deities whom the king and his people worshipped was named Ishtar, and the planet Venus used to be directly linked to her before it was ever linked to Aphrodite. It wasn't until much later, around the year 300 AD, that Christian scholars began to interpret the word Lucifer 
as another name for Satan. This was likely due to a mistranslation, but also a way to demonize the Babylonian king and the gods and goddesses he represented. As polytheistic religions fell out of favor and Christianity took over, the light of this particular goddess also started to fade. The Roman Empire fell in the year 476 AD and a lot of the knowledge from the classical world was sadly lost during the Dark Ages. Important works like On the Nature of Things by Lucretius were thought to either be destroyed or lost for good. But almost a thousand years later, in the year 417, this work by Lucretius and others were rediscovered in a German monastery by an Italian scholar named Poggio. Because of manuscripts like this being rediscovered, the old gods and goddesses made their return to the Western world. Once again, we can see how the years can affect the many tales humans have been telling for thousands of years. Different interpretations and translations shaping many of the concepts that we view in a totally different light today. Let me know in the comments section if you are aware of this connection. Thank you so much for joining me for today's tale. If you watched this video until the end, I will assume that you liked what you saw. So please like, subscribe, comment, share the video with someone else. It's a very small button for you and a gigantic leap for my channel. Until the next tale, farewell. And may the gods smile upon you.